Howdy, howdy. Uh, in that last video on troubleshooting the Newton's method uh, f of root finding, I said I wanted to do a couple companion videos, and this one is going to be one of those. It was almost an impromptu afterthought. Uh, I put the code together uh, last night before starting the recording. And um, as the previous video, it's obviously we're using uh, Newton's method, and that algorithm can fail sometimes. So I thought I'd just prevent, present a different algorithm uh, it also is not perfect, it can fail, um, but it's easier to understand conceptually, it doesn't involve any calculus, there's no derivatives. Um, so I'm just going to do a quick video on that, and uh, hopefully this will be like under 10 minutes this time. So let's just jump right into it, uh, get into a notebook. Okay, so the function we're going to play around with is this right here. It's basically a sigmoid function that's slightly, slightly modified. So I defined it down here. Um, and it has this args thing if we want to play around with like something more complicated like the Black-Scholes model at a later point. And I just plotted it out here. Uh, it basically looks like this. So it has a root somewhere around, uh, where does it cross zero? Where's zero on this plot here? So around here, a little bit, little, a little more than one, a little less than two, say 1.7, 1.75. So the idea here with this algorithm is we're going to pick two points that we know bracket this root, and there are no other roots in between. So I'm going to pick, I don't know, I'm just going to pick randomly minus 2 and how about 9. So let's just pick uh, two, var two variables. x1 is equal to minus 2, and another one, x2, is equal to 9. So let's just plot these here uh, on the plot. So let's come down here and go plt.plot. Uh, I'm going to put them at, the, at y is equal to 0, so x1, comma 0, and I'm going to make these, just as we were in the last video, a uh, blue, I'm going to make it a blue dot, so blue, uh, let me just see if that works, no it doesn't, I see what I did here, parenthesis, so there's that point, let's just copy and paste that, so here are our two points bracketing the root. So if we evaluate this function at x1, obviously this is a negative number here, and since this is bracketing, if we evaluate x2, this is a positive number here. So what we're going to do is take the mean of these two, take the distance between, take half the distance between these two, which is why it's called the bisection um, method, and we will look at the sign of that number. So the mean of these two looks to be about 4 something, so let's just calculate it up here. Um, x1 x1 plus x2 divided by 2. In fact, let's do this. Let's call this value, oops, let's call this value not, uh, we'll call it something like u. And we'll set that equal to that average, and then we will print out uh, the value of u. So print u, and we will also print out my function evaluated at u. So let's do that. Error Oh, my fingers are faster than my brain. Let's come down here and let's fix this. My function evaluated at u. Uh, so the mean value is 3.5, which is what we kind of ballparked here, and we get a positive number. So if it's a positive number, this is going to replace the x value, x1 or x2, that gave us the positive number originally. So in that case, it's going to be x2. So we're going to come down here and say x2 is equal to u, and we will just repeat the process. So let us just copy this line now, and paste it down here, and this plot is going to update since we're, we're plotting the x points after, um, after this, this update. So let's just run this cell, and you notice the new uh, x2 is here at 3.5, and so we're just going to just keep repeating this process. So we will come up here, we will, um, we're printing out u, and we're looking at the sign of that value. So the average is 7.75 and it's, and it's negative. So now we come down here and we say which one do we want to update? Well it's the one that give, gives us the negative value originally, so that's x1 in this case. So we're going to come down here, x1 is equal to u, we're going to update our plot, and you can see what's happening. We're getting closer and closer here. So let's just do this a couple more times. So we're going to copy this line. Paste it in. 
2.125 and it's positive that means we have to update this value the x uh, where's my cursor this value here the x2 so x2 is equal to u and there we go we'll do it one more time so copy paste We get their average, we get a negative value, that means we have to update x1, so x1 is equal to u, and so on. So as you can see by these dots here, we're closing in more and more on the real root. And just as, in, just as with Newton's method, you can continue this until you get to within some desired tolerance. In other words, uh, where the uh, percent change from iteration to iteration is, is within some value. So what I'm going to do, uh, to save time, I'll do it off of the recording, but I will rewrite this as a function that will basically do this process for us and um, calculate this to within some convergence tolerance. So I will go do that now. Okay, so I put this in right above our, um, our function definition for the, the uh, sigmoid type function. Um, this takes there are two arguments, x1 and x2, our function f. Um, it has a maximum number of iterations where it'll it'll bail if it cannot find a uh, find a root, uh, a default tolerance, and the option to send in some uh, additional arguments. So there's probably a better way to do this, uh, but what I did is I did this averaging process at first. So R is the guess of our, our new root. We come down and evaluate our function. Um, where is it here? So we we keep track of the value for for tolerance purposes. We see if the value of the function um, is either positive or negative at that root, then we update our x1 or x2 accordingly, and then we repeat the process, and we stay within this while loop until this tolerance is achieved. So let's run this cell, and we will test it out down here. Um, we will do r comma count. We will do, uh, this is equal to by section, what am I? What have I done here? R comma count is equal to by section. Our function, which is my function, uh, x one. What do we choose for our initial values here? We chose uh, where were they originally? Uh, minus two and nine. So let's just do those. So let's go minus two, minus two and nine, and we we'll keep everything else as the default. So does that run? Yes, it does. Uh, let's print out the root and the number of iterations uh, that it takes. So R count. So 1.163, um, 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 that looks reasonable, but let's come up and plot it um, just to, to be sure. So let's grab our plot here. We will come down here and paste that in. And then we will also plot um, that point. So we will go a plt dot plot r comma my function evaluated r and a solid circle. Yeah, looks good to me. So I uh, put in some headers here. I kind of moved the cells around a little bit. Um, did some kind of document documentation here, kind of wrote out some comments and, and kind of the step-by-step -step, uh, approach of the algorithm. I also came down here and I copied in our Newton's method uh, finding the roots from the last video. So let's just test these out to make sure that they're uh, they're close. So for Newton's method, we're going to need to work out the derivative of our function here. So I've already done that and I'm just going to paste it in and run the cell. And now let's come down here and we will do a root and the number of iterations is equal to Newton's method. Uh, my function, my function and derivative, and let's just take a, I don't know, what we'll, we'll guess uh, r is equal to zero, which is the default value. So let's, does that run? Yes, it does. Although it gives a warning. Let's print r and the number of counts. So five iterations, 
1.613, so the, the answers agree, and this was 12 iterations. And you will generally find this. Newton's method is, is more efficient computationally. Obviously, that depends on exactly what choices of routes you, you make, but in general, Newton's is going to be the, uh, the better choice. Um, so why would you use one of the, over the other? Well, as we saw, Newton's method could have some issues with uh, roots, um, not roots, zero derivatives. So if we were to come up here and we were to change this, um, where is my plot? Let's let's do a different x values here. So x is equal to lin space. Um, let's go, I don't know, zero. We'll go out to 20. And we'll do 100 points, run that cell. I need to do np dot lin space. I've been writing MATLAB all morning. np dot lin space. You can see that this function here is a zero derivative. So if I were to come down here and make our initial guess, um, let's just say r is equal to 20. Let's see if this actually gives an answer. You see it does not because essentially it's zero derivative and it's just never going to find an intercept of that, that tangent line with the, with the x-axis. So as a final uh, test case, this is our Black-Scholes model, which I'm getting kind of sick of here. Um, our uh, calculate vega, which we don't actually need for, um, for the bisection method because we don't need to calculate the derivative. Um, these were the default, care, the default uh, numbers we used for our original um, implied volatility video and you know, concatenating them into an argument, passing it into a, um, our bisection function. And let's run this. And you see we get a 36, 37 percent implied volatility, which is basically exactly what we got using Newton's method. Although, if I remember correctly, Newton's method took three iterations and this takes 10. So, again, not as efficient. And you have to make sure you are bracketing the roots. This won't work uh, otherwise. For example, if I come back up here and um, I make this a positive 5, this should fail. You see we get an answer of 7, so it, it never... Um, you see it just, it just kind of collapses to the wrong answer since we haven't bracketed the root. So let's just put it back to minus 2. And I guess we'll call it quits. This is uh, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. It has some utility. I don't think I've ever used this in a real-world problem. Uh, I have used Newton's method, but um, some people might find this useful. So uh, cool. So yeah, quick and easy. Uh, at this point, I don't really have anything to add to it. So uh, yeah, until next time, see ya.